Now, I've been anticipating this laptop for quite a while or since its announcement a couple of months back. And it's a follow-up to one of my favorite laptops of all time. It's from the ThinkPad line. And yes, it's the X1 Extreme Gen 4. And it's finally here in the studio. And there are a number of changes that I think you're going to like. They've moved to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. They've made the display bigger. That means you're gonna get smaller bezels. You'll see more on the display. Gone is that 15.6 inch form factor and good riddance. And it also has the 11 Gen H series processor. Now I have the Core i7 11800H, eight cores, 16 threads, and it has an NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU. And it also has vapor chamber cooling. There's a lot to like on this laptop. Sit back, relax, let's find out all about it. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the X1 Extreme Gen 4 starts at $1,639.20. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now my review unit has the Core i7-11800H processor. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. It also has the RTX 3060 GPU with six gigabytes of video RAM, 512 gigabytes of PCIe 4 SSD storage, and it comes at a grand total price of $2,095.20. Again, for those interested, check out the link below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get a 230 watt power adapter that uses Lenovo's own proprietary connector. And that's because it has a pretty robust GPU and you also get the extension cord as well. You get some documentation, including warranty information as well holding the unit for the first time, and you feel the premium quality and its durability all at once. Now, this is the basic black, but if you go with that UHD Plus display, then you will get that carbon weave to give it some extra pizzazz. Now, as far as the unit itself is concerned, very durable, having undergone a series of tests, earning a mil standard A10H rating. So that means this can take a licking and keep on ticking. And with a starting weight of 1.81 kilograms or 3.99 pounds for the non-touch model and 1.86 kilograms or 4.1 pounds for the touch model, this is very portable, especially for a 16-inch laptop. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side where you get your power in port, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. They're full service, meaning they support data charge and display out. You get an HDMI 2.1 port. And finally, you get your headphone microphone combo jack to round out the ports on the left side. Moving over to the right side, you get a full size SD card reader. One thing to note, the cards don't sit flush with the unit as you see here. It sticks out just a little bit as you can see. You get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports and finally a Kensington lock port to round out the ports on this laptop. And I have to say, that's a pretty good port selection. And Lenovo makes it super easy for you to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the captive filled set screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that simple. And I love the fact that Lenovo makes it easy for the user to access the insides to upgrade. Now, once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling. Now, my unit, since it has this discrete GPU, the RTX 3060, has vapor chamber cooling. Now, models that don't have the discrete GPU won't have the vapor chamber cooling. They'll have a smaller fan, and they will have a second SSD slot and an optional wireless WAN slot next to the left fan. So something to keep in mind. Now, as far as the SSD that is included with my review unit is a very fast PCIe Gen 4 with excellent reads and writes, as you can see from these results. 
And you can configure this with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is user accessible. There are two RAM slots and it is DDR4 3200 RAM capable of dual channel. So that's been pretty good so far. My unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And it's good to see that it's the faster rank eight RAM. So you're gonna get a little bit better performance out of this RAM. That's pretty good. It has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2 and both are working well so far. But the unfortunate part about that is it's soldered into the motherboard, meaning you cannot upgrade it yourself if you have to swap it out down the road. Now, it also has the optional 5G. You can get it with the Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 5G modem, and that is pretty good as far as an option if you want to do some traveling on the road. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a pretty robust 90 watt hour battery. I'm going to test battery life and charging times in that upcoming full review. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. In fact, you can open this up all the way flat, as you see here. Now, once inside, you'll notice that familiar keyboard we've come to know and love from the ThinkPad line. And I'm happy to report the key travel is good. It's got that excellent tactile feedback, and you never feel like your fingers will bottom out. Now, there's a two-stage backlight on it that lights up white as far as the keys are concerned, and it allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now, this also has a precision touchpad with two-finger scrolling that is buttery smooth, and all the gestures are working as you'd expect, super responsive. I'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. It also has another pointing device, and that would, of course, be the track point. And, of course, that is part of the ThinkPad DNA, not going anywhere anytime soon, but it's there for those that want to use it. Now, as you can see here, there are three display options. I have the QHD Plus display option 2.5K, which is 2560 by 1600. And with that being a 16 inch display, that means it is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. That's gonna be better for productivity, taller display. That means you'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You're looking at some really deep black, some excellent contrast, some very vibrant colors, and it is pretty color accurate with a 1.24 Delta E score, meaning anything below two is considered color accurate and very good. It also covers the color gamut really well, 100% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, 77% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 70% NTSC, making this a decent choice if you are a content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, and of course, video editing. And this display has an anti-glare coating on it. That means you don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections as you would with a glossy display. So this is pretty good. Now, one thing to note, this is a 60 hertz display, but we've been seeing some really nice displays out of Lenovo out of some more inexpensive laptops, specifically the IdeaPad 5 Pro, which has a 120 hertz display. That I just reviewed in both the AMD and Intel models. For those interested, I'll leave links in the description below. Now, this is a non-touch display, but there is a touch model available with that UHD plus resolution, that higher resolution. I would imagine that would also use more power and will be less battery life in that model. So if you want better battery life, I would recommend going with this display because you're going to use less power. And one of the biggest benefits you're going to get by moving to a 16 inch 16 to 10 display is you're going to get smaller bezels and a larger display more screen real estate and that is definitely something that is a welcome addition that's for sure and to give you an example of what i'm talking about on the left is the x1 extreme gen 4 and on the right is its predecessor the x1 extreme gen 3. that one has an oled display this one is an ips display and as you can see this is a taller display with thinner bezels so this is the front facing camera on the brand new lenovo thinkpad x1 extreme gen 4 and finally we have a 1080p 30 frames per second webcam what do you think about the video quality what do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics now one thing to note this is not a windows hello camera that means you cannot log in with face recognition but that's okay you still get a fingerprint scanner that will allow you to do that the power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner and it's working well so far but again i want to know what you think about this uh, 1080p webcam will it be good for zoom and all your work from home needs let me know in that comment section below
Now, when it comes to the sound, we have two top firing speakers, the Dolby Atmos speakers. They're two watts each. And I got to say, they're pretty good so far. The volume is good and fills up the room pretty nicely. There is a hint of bass. The mids are decent. I'll talk more about this in the upcoming full review. Now, when it comes to the CPU, you can actually get this with up to a Core i9. I have the Core i7, 11800H, 8 cores, 16 threads. I've got 16 gigabytes of that DDR4 3200 RAM. I also have 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage, as I mentioned. Now, as far as the discrete GPU options, as you can see, there are a number of GPU options. Mine has the 3060 GPU with six gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. And as you can see from these numbers so far, my initial benchmarks that I ran, pretty impressive performance. But of course, I still need to test the thermals. I still need to see how it will do with this vapor chamber cooling on my review unit. But so far, it's looking pretty good. I'll also test the gaming performance as well under heavy load we'll see how this all will perform okay let's bring it all home what do i think about the lenovo thinkpad x1 extreme gen 4 here for 2021 and boy as you can see from all these pros on this this is a pretty special laptop so far of course i still need to do my full testing and bring you my full review but my initial impressions 24 hours in i am pretty much blown away by a lot of the stuff that i'm seeing here i love this move to a 16 inch 16 to 10 aspect ratio display it's a matte display Play, no glare no reflections you gotta love it strong cpu gpu combination here of course you could always go up to a core i9 you can go all the way up to a rtx 3080 i don't know if you need to do that especially if you're going to have some thermal issues we'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review you're looking at fast pcie gen 4 ssd on this two thunderbolt 4 slash usb ports upgradable ram upgradable ssd we have the thinkpad keyboard here we have 5g G as an option on this a 1080p webcam here especially here in 2021 it's a must-have the negatives here there's no oled option like you used to get and it can get a bit pricey i think lenovo's got another winner on its hands stay tuned the full review will be coming very soon so what do you think about this bad boy? The X1 Extreme Gen 4 finally got it into the studio and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Now, as I mentioned, they've moved to a 16 inch, 16 to 10 aspect ratio as far as the display. Now you can get this in a 4K resolution. There is no OLED option. This is an IPS option. And this one is the 2.5K display, 2560 by 1600. And you're gonna do a little bit better on battery life as opposed to that 4K display. And what I like about this display, it's bright, it's sharp, it's got everything you want, good coverage of the color gamut, color accuracy, and it gets very bright. So I'm gonna bring you more on this display in my upcoming full review. Now, as far as performance on this, we're running the Core i7 11800H processor, eight cores, 16 threads. Performance is looking good so far, but of course I need to test a lot more. I need to test the thermals, especially this new vapor chamber cooling. And I'm also liking the fact this is upgradable. There are two RAM slots and there are two SSD slots. So a lot to like about this. And the other thing I wanted to mention, there's optional 5G on this. So if you wanna be connected on the go with this powerful portable, you have that option. So a lot more to come on this. Battery life needs to be tested. We need to test everything as far as that performance, gaming performance, of course, and everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. That's all going to be in the upcoming full review. But so far, my initial benchmarks looking good. But of course, I got a lot more to do with this laptop. Now, because I don't have that higher resolution display, I'm not getting that carbon weave or the carbon fiber weave uh, that you get to give it a little bit more pizzazz. But I'm okay with this. This is the basic black. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that you're seeing less fingerprints on this. So the oleophobic coating seems to be improved as well. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Now, don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.